Hello, everybody, and welcome to session three of our microeconomics class. Um, today, we're going to talk about some game theory, um, which, again, is not a standard thing that you do in a regular microeconomics class um, where you're just talking about supply and demand and indifference curves and that kind of stuff. We still haven't even gotten to that. Um, the reason we're talking about game theory today um, is because the core econ textbook that we're using uses game theory as kind of the way of explaining lots of the economic models that we're talking about. Um, it's also a very useful way of thinking about how people interact with each other or how states or how countries uh, interact with each other. It's kind of a, a way of putting some math to human interactions. Um, lots of the numbers that we're going to be using today are just totally made up. Um, this is a common theme throughout economics, um, and we'll talk more about that. It's this idea of utility, this just kind of this unmeasurable fake number thing, but um, it's a way of, of still predicting how people interact with each other. So don't be put off by the whole fake numbers thing that we're going to be dealing with today. Um, it's something that happens in the real world, um, and you'll see that it does actually have value even though we're just kind of making up numbers. Um, so don't be too off-put by that. So let's go ahead and get started. The plan for today um, is we're going to talk about a few important topics here. We'll first, there we go, um, talk about the relationship between individuals um, and society as a whole and how um, these two different types of people or, or institutions like society often have different goals. Um, and because of that, you behave differently when you think about yourself versus others. Um, and there's, there's actually economic reasons for that. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll do a brief crash course into how game theory works. We're going to be doing some simple game theory. You can take like classes, like multiple methods classes in a PhD level class where it teaches you all of the fancy math behind this stuff. You can be a professional game theorist where you just do calculus all day. We're not doing any of that. Um, the only numbers that you'll have to do, the only math that you'll have to do is you have to cover up a column in a table and figure out which of two numbers is the biggest. That's the extent of the math you need to know for this. So don't worry. Um, we'll go through lots of different examples of how to solve these game theory problems. Um, we'll keep it as simple as possible throughout this class. It's just two people interacting with each other. Um, in actual game theory classes, you get up to um, infinite numbers of people interacting with each other, hence the calculus. So don't worry about that. And then we'll talk about a specific type of game theory game that you um, had in your readings, um, this idea of a stag hunt and how that's related to this prisoner's dilemma idea and why we care about this in an econ class. And then finally, we'll talk about some ways of solving what are called collective action problems, which um, we'll talk about um, later in the session. But it's mostly what do you do when individual incentives don't line up with collective incentives? And how do you get people to act in the collective interest? Um, which is something that we care a lot about in public policy and public administration. We care about getting people to contribute to the public good and to uh, the public interest. And getting those incentives lined up is a tricky thing. And that's kind of the challenge of, of economics and that's why you're in this class. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> 